everybody. How are you? I always sound quite whispery at the beginning. I have to sort of hear my voice first, see where I'm at. I drink a lot of throat tea now because speaking, I realise, is what I've always done and been as a speaker. And I have to take care of it because also I hold all anxiety in my throat area. And over the years, I've had throat issues, but now I know to take care of it. It's an instrument that I need to really keep maintained. And that's omming and humming and meditating and not talking too much because I have a tendency to really love a big old chat and then I'm exhausted afterwards. Because I put my heart and soul into everything that I say and do. And I'm also an extremely sensitive person. And that comes with um kind of and I'll use the word danger because to be around people that are not present not grounded don't have manners don't demonstrate any common sense are speeding along in life actually end up hurting me and even though it's not on purpose because believe me I know when it's on purpose I've, I've you know I've experienced that as well it doesn't make it any less painful, actually, because boundaries are everything. We're all entitled to them. It is literally what it says. It's a space between you and me until each of us are in a mutually comfortable position where we'd like it to become closer. And I'm talking about everything from dealing with people that are coming to your house to do some work on it or people in the street or people on public transport or people in the office or people in your home and all the relationships that you have and everything, you're allowed to demonstrate boundaries. And I have to, because since my diagnosis and uh, of two years, I have now let all guard down and now I'm navigating the world as an extremely sensitive person and but I'm also a strong person and I know how to use language and I understand what words actually mean so when I'm talking to people there is no confusion about what I need and what this this whole you know moment we're having together will be like for either of us and I can't dictate when that's going to happen you know I've had somebody grab me from behind recently when I was having a meal with my sisters and I wasn't expecting it and it really fucking scared me and I said to this person don't touch me just came out and then I burst into tears and I don't understand on what planet that's okay to come up behind somebody and grab them on their shoulders when they're talking to other people. And and it was somebody that worked at the restaurant. It was the most extraordinary thing. But it's not unusual. So um, I think where this week, and I will probably cry during this... Uh, video at some stage because I'm really going through it at the moment in terms of the atrociousness of what other humans can be like but as always I care about these people and I think gosh if you just slowed down if you just became a little bit in the room like back in the room I don't know if you remember back in the day I can't it was a hypnotist and it was back in the room and it is like that I feel like people are um What's the other term I keep using? Lost in action. People are literally lost in action and they're everywhere. And I'm just like, hello, hello, speak to me, be here, be present, understand, see the situation, read the room, be kind, be polite, be understanding, listen. Nobody's listening. I The amount of times I'll ask a question and somebody gives me an answer of something I haven't said, it's something they thought I meant or they're predicting what they think I might say. And how, is, how are any of us going to be able to have a conversation if we're doing that? It's not efficient. 
there's no fluency to it. It's just like a hiccup every five seconds and it's exhausting. You've got to listen to what people are actually saying and respond accordingly, accordingly with, with goodness in your heart. I mean, I talked about patience the other day and that's something I have to practice because at the moment I will get short with people. I'm just kind of like, and it comes out in a way that isn't like get out my fucking house because although I'd like to say that I can't, I'll, I'll just make sure that they're getting out of the door quicker than they, they themselves can even get themselves out of the door, if that makes sense. Um, because people aren't awake they're not present, they're not looking at, the, they think they're making assumptions and assumption came up last week as well and that's a whole other layer of somebody not demonstrating common sense because if you're operating with assumption, you're wrong and so you're living in some weird world that doesn't actually exist and if you're doing it with, and I only say these things out of experience and stop being nosy as well. Don't be nosy. There's a way to communicate with people and get to know them without asking them weird and detailed questions about their personal lives straight away. I don't understand that. I am really talkative and I am a conversationalist. I love it. I, I actually really fucking love it. And I love to laugh with people through conversation. I mean, I met a couple, a couple of weeks ago and we were laughing within seconds of meeting each other. There was such a great couple. And, and I thought, God, I bet they're fun to hang out with. You know, they were just real and grounded and, and, and you know, they were, everybody's going through stuff, but you can still be happy. I find joy in everything. Absolutely everything. I was looking out the window today in the rain and it's been raining heavily this morning and the, the tree, that is, we've got a silver birch outside and it was covered in uh, raindrops. Covered in raindrops. It was so beautiful, my goodness me. And if you haven't seen that, you're not being present because what's happening is, and I've noticed it, it was, and I'm going to go off last week, because last week was kind of a mad week, where I met three people in a row who wanted to complain to me about the weather or they wanted a mutual a mutual conversation about how shit the weather is. And, 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 I, and I was like, I just said, oh, I love the rain. And they didn't hear me and continue to say what a shit day it was and how we can't work, you know, we collectively, we um, and will be so much better when the sun's shining. And by the way, the sun shines all the time here. It's the most extraordinary weather here in Yorkshire. It's so interesting. The sky is is telling a story all the time. I started to get really tuned into, I know, I know what's coming. Because also when you're present, you can see the future because you know, you start to see the patterns of where things will roll to way before they do in all things, actually. So it's an absolute, um, um, it is absolutely vital that we get some presence in our lives because we will operate more effectively if we're listening. And I'm just going to say this, and I'm not going to go into it too heavily, but yesterday I switched on the TV to listen to GMTV talking about autism with this lady who's got an autistic son and Chris Packham. And the language that was used was so antiquated and old. Spectrum, hello, that's not a thing. Um, it says that um, Chris was diagnosed Asperger's, which is true, but that, that's no longer a diagnosis. So he's basically autistic. So we need to say that because people are still confused about this some sliding scale of intelligence, which just is not true. And it's not a disorder either. And that's just a few things. And I switched off and I'm not going to be part of that conversation this week when apparently this is the week or a couple of weeks or it is even a month of people making money in the name of autism when actually these people are not helping one autistic person. I do not believe that they are. Because it hurt me yesterday to listen to that bullshit, that conversation. I, 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 try, I was like, Melanie, you've got to listen, you've got to listen, you've got to know what's being said, but God, it was killing me. And the ignorance, oh, the ignorance, wow. I'm not even talking the guests. If you're going to be a journalist, fucking do your research, man. 
or get your team to research it properly so you're up to date. And also, when did we get so glued to a diary that says we talk about women's empowerment on this day and we talk about autism on this week? All of a sudden, topics are diarised. When I started my magazine, I remember wanting to do something about um, weddings and sustainable weddings. And I was told it's not wedding season, even though people get married every single day of the year and do globally, always. There is no such thing as wedding season. It's only been put there so you'll, that's when you think it is and that's where you'll spend the most money and it's bollocks. There are no rules about dates in the diary and the media is driven by April Fool's Day. It's the same every year, Valentine's Day, April Fool's Day. Fucking what? How about celebrating every day, everything, and having a forum for it always to be constantly spoken of? Because it just isn't right what's happening even in, in so-called um, charitable causes. And I'm not even, I've heard some stuff about charitable causes in the past five years that would make your toes curl. It's not right. You know, I was asked to endorse products for this particular period for aut autistic uh, charities for autistic people. And they aren't at all. It's just a money making machine. I'm not being part of it. So I'm just, what I'm saying is get grounded. Get some boundaries in place. Start being present and listening and navigating things in a bit more of a real and com with uh, and operating in common sense because it's distinctly lacking in so many people because people have stopped being... Because you, you have to have guidance around common sense sometimes. If you're sensitive, you can feel a room and you can read a room and you, can, you know how to operate. I feel like I don't... You know, if I'm standing behind somebody, I was, there was somebody here today fixing a light bulb. Bless him, he was brilliant. And I was standing behind him and I said, do you mind if I sort of... I'm hovering behind you because I just want to be present when you're doing it. And he was like, yeah, yeah, no problem. And he, he was doing his thing and he was speaking out loud about what he was doing. And he said, oh, I have to say what I'm going to do. It helps me process. I'm the same. I like saying things out. And we knew where we were both at and there was mutual respect and um, we had a conversation. But not, it's just so rare. And it's so rare because I don't think, I don't, I'm not going to, this isn't a blame game, but children aren't being taught common sense, being grounded, how to slow down and be present at all. And that should be like fucking lesson number one, that the self is important, that what our experiences in this world and how we operate, we are the powerhouse behind our experience. And I don't, and I do get into conversations with people who go, yes, it's a great epiphany when you get to 50. Fuck getting to 50, teach the children now. So they don't have an epiphany at 50 or 60 or 70 when they start to, to care less about what people think and all the rules that get broken as you get older, just getting back to being yourself and actually I just letting people know how you want it. Do it now, teach the kids now so we don't have generation after generation who aren't well. Enlightenment, I think it might be called, is to be present, to be illuminated, which is the name of my autobiography. Wake up, light bulb moments, have space to think about it. I mean, today he's put this one light bulb in that hasn't worked since we moved in and it's above a mirror. And, it, and that side of the room is not illuminated very well. And I can't tell you the, the actual pleasure of seeing that light being switched on. That's how grateful I am. That's how present I am. That's how much I love my life and the things that are in it. And it's usually, the, it's always the small things because nothing huge is going to make you as happy as all the collective, actual, detailed living experience. I've been cleaning this new house with um, my friend Melanie and we are talking and making it shine and bringing it to life and there's so much joy in that and if you have to do and know people moan about housework but you know what <laughs> if you're really present with it 
And I'm busy. And everybody always says, I'm so busy. I want to just tickle around, get it out of the way. And oh God, we've got to wallpaper the living room because it's a mess because of this. And oh my God, we've got to do this and all got to do that. And it's like, why don't you enjoy doing those things instead of moaning about those things? Because actually those things are quite fun. Even if you just get people to do it who love it and just sit around talking to them or whatever you need to do. Like, I don't know, community, fun. What happened to having fun, man? Being silly. I've just bought um, a feather duster. It's not made of feathers. It's, it, it was a sustainable brand. I can't remember which one it is now. And it's made of bamboo. And I fucking love it. All my mirrors and everything. And it's just so nice. And just the environment I live in now really means that I need one. And like some people would be thinking, has she gone mad? But I am, I, I'm grateful. I live in gratitude. I live in the faith that all is well and I demonstrate boundaries and as I said I'm having to I can be short with people which I can soften but sometimes sometimes it's just a, it's all it's all right to just be firm with somebody and, and just say look ain't working can we not have this conversation and could you please go or go away yourself and just say whatever Because it hurts when people don't understand boundaries or what others might need and stop preempting what that is and actually start asking how people want to live and play it. Because another thing that was spoken of is how the, you know, how the world's got to understand autistic people and the world does, the, the world does, absolutely, but not the way it's been spoken of at the moment. And we are all sensitive creatures and we all should learn how to work with each other's needs with a big smile on our face and a huge bloody heart. Not this fit in or fuck off bullshit world that's being demonstrated right now. You know, it's got to a point, and I say this all the time, if you believe that you are neurodivergent and autistic based on all the things that you've heard and learned over the last however many years coming from people that aren't lying to you and not trying to fucking sell you something, then the, you'll, you'll realise that actually it's a lesson for us all to just be a bit more fucking tolerant and some of us are just really sensitive. I don't know what to tell you, man. I don't like surprises. I don't like people jumping out at me. I've never been able to watch horror films. I really don't like it. Although my eldest boy um, asked me to watch Halloween and I was like, I don't want to watch it. But it was actually quite, quite mad and funny, really. Um... And there are certain things that you say about yourself as well. I was talking to somebody the other day who said I don't like um, roller coaster rides, and I was like, "Oh my god, I, I, oh my god, I used to, I used to hate them." And then a couple of years ago, when I talk about it in my book, I actually ended up going to um, Universal Studios and um, going on everything like a crazed addicted adrenaline junkie and it was fucking hilarious and fun and whether I'd be up for it now I don't know but it doesn't matter I'm evolving all the time and you can too everybody you know people go he's stuck in his ways you don't need to be stuck in your ways why it's not working for you I'm guarantee if you're stuck in your ways you, you don't feel very you're not going to be happy and I, and I don't mean it in a stuck in your ways in the doing the things that you love if you're doing that repetitively well then bravo you are what you've literally won the lottery because that's all it is and we can give ourselves that lottery we don't have to buy a ticket for it we can actually own it ourselves just be present when you're present as well all your ideas your personal ideas and visions come to you because I think people become visionless certainly in this country because it's not a visionary country it just isn't and it's a shame uh, it's a shame for the people that live here because because we, I want to be, I am, I don't even want to be, there is no, I'm a global citizen. I wasn't just born in the north of England. I wasn't just born in England. I wasn't, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm everywhere at all times, everything. And also my genetic makeup, it dictates that too. Because my ancestry is far and wide as is yours. So we've got to see it start to be so broad in our thinking about who is really funny. I just watched a, 
something with Frank Sinatra on a chat show and he pretended to do that. And I, he was coming on and he was so elegant and he was doing the amazing entrance that he, he and only he can do. And then he sat down and I thought, he's going to trip up the stairs. Actually, that was, he was coming up the stairs. And I thought, I bet he trips up the stairs and he didn't. <laughs> he sat down and pretended to fall, uh, his elbow fall off the desk. Yeah, it's uh, Johnny Carson. It's wonderful. Um... Why did I get onto that? I don't know why I got onto that. God, I'm really into him. He's amazing. And that whole era. And let me say, in terms of um, interviewing, then were the days. And we need to go back to it a little bit more. I don't really know what people are doing on chat shows anyway. It's all so strange. People, I, I, I want I bring back the good interviewer. You know, I love interviewing people, and I wasn't particularly good at it because I wasn't present sometimes. Um, but it, and I've gotten better at it as you as one does when one practices something. But really, um, all the games people get have to play games all of a sudden and stupid quizzes. It always gets stuck on the end of something and. I used to have to do days in the studio where I was promoting something and it's always ask you a few questions then play silly games and I used to hate it. I think, oh, what a waste of time. We could be really having a conversation here, but people don't... The art of conversation is gone. Well, it's dwindling. Sorry, it's not gone. It's dwindling. I'm craving it. Craving it. And it's hard to find. So we need to start tuning in tuning in and then you become a visionary like I say if you if you're looking at if you're seeing raindrops in a in a silver birch it looks like fruit on there they just look like berries that are covering it but they're water it's just it's in, it's just unreal you, you you can imagine what every day is like for me it's <laughs> I'm so happy and I, and I really love my own company and I love that my son is with me and my, and my dog is just a constant joy to me but I have wounds and there's days where I have to lie around in the afternoon and I've put a weighted blanket on me certainly recently with the kind of toxicity I'm coming across all the people that are asleep and it's and I don't want to other anybody and I'm not other, othering people, but people can hurt and they don't even know what they're doing because they're not present. I have to go and heal. I have to go and heal. I, have, I use my crystals. You know, I have like, I pull out these angel cards, it's like three words and they, they, they'll think, there'll be things like honesty, truth, um, 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 discernment and, this, and they just trigger and... Um, a vibe for the day, you know, and and I and I I really know how to look after myself, but it's it I it makes me cry because sometimes I'm in so much pain from the invasion that I've experienced, and it's always with people. It's not with animals because I'm starting to tune into the animal world as well, which is just heaven, 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 heaven. I mean, I mean, I've always loved the birds, but the birds are just something else to me now. They're teaching me how to be, and the trees are, and the wind, and the elements. I mean, I mentioned the other day, I put something on Instagram, I'd been for a walk, and, and it was, I cried into the wind, I cried into the wind with gratitude, and it was cold, and it was just, the, and I was getting whipped by the rain, and then all suddenly it was just warm, and blue skies, and it was sunny again, and I took a load of pictures, and somebody had DM me to say, well, it was very cold up there today, though, as if I hadn't I'd missed out the negative bit of the photographs. But that cold, if you're wearing a base layer, does not bite. If anything, it made me, I want to be held by the elements when I'm up there. I want them to hold me and make me realise that I'm a bee and part of it. It is me and it's you. And if you've got, if you've tuned out to nature you've got to reel yourself back in it is the only way we're going to heal ourselves and heal the world and just well it's not even heal the world it's just 
Um, not become extinct, for fuck's sake. <laughs> People are lost in action, man. They're lost in action. We have to rein them back in. Come on, come on, come on. Come and have a look at the sky. Come and have a look at the stars. Come and feel that wind. Stand in the rain. Get your feet wet. I don't really like doing that, but if that's your bag, do it. But everything else doesn't matter until you've sorted that out. And it is it can be a solitary or it can be with your favourite person or whatever it is. Go and do it, go and do it, go and do it. All day long, every day, just put it in your diary as you do, like having your hair cut. Because really, I mean, which reminds me of this, I seriously need this coin. This has been a short haircut growing out for ages and it's driving me crack crackers. But I live in a flat cap, so it's all good. Um... So there's an awful lot there and I'm only talking to you about real feelings on a weekly basis. Today I didn't even have a title because I just had stuff to say and I guess some days I'm frustrated because nobody really sounds like me and so I, I want to listen to people that sound like me and they're, they're not there. And, um, but that's fine because I've got me and my thoughts and my ideas and I know that I'm helping people and I'm healing myself in the process and actually learning more about myself whilst doing it as well. And my book has been a huge part of that. And I even trying to, I mean, I already want to, I already know what my second book is. I just, the ideas are coming so thick and fast, it's not, you know, too quick for me to write. So I'm trying to find the right stuff for that technology to help me with that. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm fast tracking, fast tracking, fast tracking to heal, heal, heal and health and um, awakeness. And I'm very much awake and present and I have to go with the flow of the intensity of all those feelings and take care of myself. So I hope you do the same. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you next week. Bye.